HSBC is a fascinating company. It was formed in 1865. And from those roots out in the Far East with its very Scottish Calvinist principles, it's been a pretty solid rock, particularly around trade. And I think that's where it really began. And so the organisation started to expand quite rapidly, became quite an aggressive acquirer of other banks. And that gave them an incredible kind of revenue base to acquire other businesses. And so when we first got to HSBC and started looking at the task ahead, one of the things that they'd already done was unify a lot of these acquired banks under one piece of branding, as we called it back then, a label, which was the Red Hexagon and the HSBC letters, but not a brand. And a non-executive director of the bank who um, had you know, persuaded the board that actually they needed to develop this so it had proper resonance with consumers, that it had proper meaning, was really the place where the whole task began. At the time, all other competitors had taken the approach of be large, be global, try to be one size fits all for all, all markets. Because there was a sort of zeitgeist in the world, actually, around both global brands and also around the whole issue of how the internet was changing the world and that actually we were all far more connected and joined up than we'd ever been. What HSBC tried to do was to take a different, more nuanced view, which is that the world isn't the same everywhere, that the world needs different approaches, different solutions. And so from that came the sense of uh, celebrating the diversity. It's when a slogan such as the World's Local Bank becomes part of the brand, part of the logo and the lock-up of the brand, that it actually moves from being an advertising idea to being a, a brand idea. That line represented the sort of this, the security of being global, but the, I suppose intimacy of being local so it had that sort of combined power of being uh, you know two things at once consumers need to understand that you're close to them and that's a little bit scary to be global so they like you to be global for security and safety but they want you to be local to understand their needs and I think HSBC given the way this brand emerged through mergers really understands that and they allow their campaigns to demonstrate that to consumers over and over again. I do remember going to I think our first AGM after the world's local bank had been launched and uh, our chairman stood up and said, as the world's local bank, blah, and he entered his speech like that, and you thought, well, it's worked, you know, the chairman is actually not saying Hit, welcome to HSBC, he's saying welcome to the world's local bank, to all of those shareholders amassed in front of him. So for us, that ability for it to sort of become a rallying cry, even if folks weren't necessarily sure what it would become, was very important. The brands had roughly three phases of, of, of work that's added meaning to the brand. The first phase was around this idea of uh, never underestimating local knowledge, which was a great vehicle for the bank to sort of establish its global local credentials around the world. That campaign evolved very quickly into the cultural collisions work that I think we felt was the place where it really took off and caught light, which was the work around telling stories. And the most famous one for us was the gentleman in the Chinese restaurant with his eels. And I do remember... Back then, my boss, Peter Stringham, uh, putting one of the Eels ads up in front of an audience of Chinese marketing people, and he got a standing ovation. They thought it was wonderful. The English believe it's a slur on your host's food if you don't clear your plate. Whereas the Chinese feel you're questioning their generosity if you do. At HSBC, we never underestimate the importance of local knowledge which is why we have local banks staffed by local people in over 80 countries across the globe. HSBC, the world's local bank. Something that was very precious to us with the brand was humour. And humour in banking was kind of rare. We looked around the world and said, does anyone else use it? Well, not really. And it's not necessarily always very easy. The organisation's very conscious of anything that might make people feel uncomfortable. So I think when you look at national kind of, you know, trends or sort of traits, you know, we always had to tread a fairly cautious line. But I think we did it kind of well and without compromising the creative idea. So the next phase of the campaign was specifically designed to sort of open up the door to more personal finance customers uh, while still remaining relevant to business customers. Essentially for us, cultural collisions was always how we saw the world. And essentially what we then did was turn the kind of telescope around, if you like, and try and figure out how people saw the world around them. And so Points of View was born. 
And that for us was a sort of good exercise in trying to figure out how to engage our customers in a slightly different way. I think from different points of view, it allowed HSBC to create a debate. It allowed HSBC to create a, a discussion, engage with, uh, with both customers and also employees. The interesting thing for us is the airport program, which started in Heathrow, Stansted and Gatwick, was never really actually ever envisaged to be as global as it is, but it obviously caught light. Originally, we'd bought primarily external signage at Heathrow, purely for awareness building. And essentially, when we found that we could also get some posters on the inside, the whole thing took off. And I think from the media industry's point of view, it spawned an entire industry almost on its own. I think the challenge for us is always how to keep it fresh and how to leverage it. And we're finding ourselves now uh, building some incredibly beautiful things like lounges. We've just taken uh, some space in Terminal 2 in Mexico. So if you're a customer out there and you'd like to go and use the lounge in Mexico, go and have a look for it. It's a lovely piece of space. Well, I think HSBC are known for their airports. Uh, when you step off a plane, when you talk to people in the street, you say HSBC, they often say, oh, yeah, the airport advertising. And it's a really iconic worldwide uh, media platform. And I think for me it's... One of the most exciting things about working on the brand is it is probably the biggest, most unique media space in the world. So HTPC's presence is in over 50 airports worldwide, across the jet bridges predominantly. So when you arrive in a country, when you leave a country, the first and last message that you see is HSBC, the world's local bank, which is absolutely perfect for their brand positioning and launching and maintaining the world's local bank. So it's a real stature media. All the airports had had a a URL. Nearly 2 million people bothered to go to that website. Over 60 topics people could comment on and, and posit their views. And you could then compare one country to another Well, I can remember when I was living in Paris, uh, going through Charles de Gaulle, and there's an enormous connecting um, corridor with um, HSBC advertising all the way down it. Um, And you're almost told a story as you go all the way down this corridor with the different points of view within different meanings of different words. So, for example, security can mean digital security, it can mean home security, it can mean looking after your child. And those kind of uh, iconic images that just really capture your imagination, very simple, creative, um, really bring to life the differences um, locally, but that can then be communicated globally uh, by a bank like HSBC. This was a paper that was about multi-market and took an idea that was true for one market and demonstrated how it worked unbelievably well across many. And for a bank to adopt a a strategy that takes its scale and then makes that relevance to local audiences is a brilliant piece of thinking in that particular respect. And the consistency is absolutely extraordinary. And if you are an overseas business flyer, you will step out of an HSBC, I don't know what you call those things, gate and then you will step back into another one wherever you landed, and immediately that campaign is there writ large in front of you. And so it's not just an exercise in clever thinking, it's a brilliant exercise in application. You do feel that it is the world's local bank when you travel the world. We literally then explored people's different values on, on things. That phase actually sort of coincided with the, with the global credit crunch. So it was quite brave for HSBC to undertake to you know, communicate these types of messages during that time. Finance can be quite a dry category, so they allowed themselves creatively to ask you questions, to draw you to a long format story as you walked along, or the, some of their films on TV are absolutely beautiful stories, and they're not hammering home finance messages all the time. I think that was really good understanding of their consumer. We had something that was called Lumberjack, which was a 60-second spot. It didn't get buckets of airtime. It never necessarily got the kind of coverage we might have liked for it. But for me, it summed it up. It was the story of a couple. She was protesting against a bunch of logging kind of guys coming in, and her boyfriend ended up being one of the loggers. But you didn't really know that until the resolution in the film. So um, for me, that kind of summed it up. And it was a lovely piece of filmmaking shot by a terrific director. And, you know, we allowed the director to, you know, have a very strong say in the treatment and the cut. And Axel Caldicott, our creative director, who does a great job on this kind of thing, you know, really let him go to town and enjoy the filmmaking process. So for us, I think that, for me, is my favourite in that campaign, not based on data. some mornings when the sky looks like a road. So since the launch of the world's local bank in 2002, HSBC's annual operating income has risen from $26.6 billion uh, to $88.6 billion in 2008, so a real success story. 
Um, and in 2008, even during the worldwide recession, HSBC's operating profit remained stable, demonstrating the strength of being the world's local bank. HSBC moved from being ninth in the world in the Forbes 2000 list to being first by 2008. Customer deposits increased by 125% over the same time. Shareholder return is one of the key benchmarks for the company, and over the course from 2002 to 2008, they are able to increase it faster than any of their competitors. The HSBC paper is a must-read for anybody who needs to look at integration. This is about integration across all channels and on a global nature. So it's looking at out of home, married with television, married with business to business press. And it's not about following the classic model of thinking you have somebody in their home five nights a week and they'll watch certain shows. It's more about understanding how this audience moved around the world and around the country and around their business days. Well, I think for me, the world's local bank really crystallises what HSBC is is about as a brand and as a business. And it brings together a marketing strategy, a business strategy, and really just emphasizes their scale and stature in the world and gives them a really unique uh, positioning within the banking sector. The great thing about HSBC is the power of the brand idea at the core of that, the world's local bank. It's a fantastic idea if you think about it. And it has been powerful and flexible enough to fuel creativity with local nuance on a global scale. What it teaches us is that brands should spend a whole lot more time getting the brand idea, the brand thinking right before rushing into communications. For me personally, it's been a really interesting journey in being able to tap into a huge variety of different creative uh, talents from around the world, almost like a virtual creative department around, uh, spread around the world, you know, all working with this common, common purpose. It's been, you know, exhilarating. The HSBC story is an interesting one because it's got certain Mission Impossible aspects to it. We had thousands of different kind of product lines, hundreds almost of different types of people who worked for the company. We had bucket loads of different nationalities. We had a need to unify all of this under some common flag and if we thought about it for too long we might have decided to quote Homer Simpson that trying is simply the first step towards failure but actually in this case trying became a wonderful journey Welcome to the world's local bank Your journey starts here